The year was 1989. I was just starting my music collection, studying photography, and getting ready to graduate from high school. I didn't know it at the time, but a simple photo that I took of part of my music collection would become a sort of musical time capsule. Now, three decades later, let's take a look inside. That's next on Track by Track. Hey everybody, my name's Kyle and this is Track by Track, music reviews, news, and commentary. Thanks for tuning in today, and if this is your first time here, please take a second to click subscribe so that you won't miss future reviews and more. I was going through a box of old photographs the other day, and, and that's how a lot of stories start, right? Someone is digging through old, long-forgotten photos and comes across some images that stir up old memories. Well, in this case, what I found was a musical memory, a sort of musical time capsule, actually. Here's the deal. In addition to music, one of my other hobbies is photography. In fact, I can trace both hobbies back to pretty much the same time period, specifically high school in the late 80s. In my senior year, I took a darkroom photography class and learned how to shoot and develop my own black and white photos. I went on to build a darkroom in my parents' basement and even did some freelance photography work during my college years. So the other day I found myself going through an old box full of photo prints and negatives from that era, and I found an an interesting picture that seems to illustrate the early days of my music collection. For the life of me, I don't remember why I took this photo. I'm guessing it may have been to accompany an article that I may have written for the school newspaper. Based on the release dates for the albums in the picture, it had to have been taken in the spring of 1989. I've spent a bit of time thinking about this picture and about the albums that I included. It's clearly an odd assortment of CDs and cassettes. In fact, it's interesting to me to see a mix of medias here. See, the compact disc had only been around for a few years when this picture was taken, and they were more expensive than cassettes. A new album on CD might be on sale for 16 bucks, but the same album on cassette might only cost half that price. So back then, I wasn't as likely to invest in something on CD unless I really thought I'd love it. Case in point. In the back right, we have the long box for the Beatles, Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. This was actually the very first CD that I ever bought. And of course, I still have it. And since CDs were so much more expensive back then compared to cassettes, I usually kept my receipts just in case they were defective. I just slipped them inside the booklets so that they wouldn't get lost. So right here is the receipt for my Sgt. Pepper CD. It's so old and faded that I had to scan it into Photoshop to actually be able to read it and reveal that I bought this CD for $13.99 at Discount Den on April 18th of 1988. Since then, I bought this album twice more. Once in 2009 when the Beatles albums were remastered and I invested in this complete discography box set, and then of course I bought the 2017 Super Deluxe Edition as well. Next to the Beatles in the photo was the very first U2 album that I bought on CD, and that's Rattle and Hum. Now this one also still had the receipt inside, showing that I picked this up for $17.88 at Apple Tree Records on October 11th, 1988. That's the day after it was released, actually. And next to that is Van Halen's OU812. Now I don't seem to have the receipt for this one, but I do know that it came out in May of 1988, and I definitely remember it being one of my earliest CD purchases. Right in front of the Beatles is what I would guess to be the very first CD that I bought that I already owned on cassette, and that's Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon. I don't actually own that version of the CD anymore. I probably sold it after I upgraded to the Mobile Fidelity Gold CD edition. And then later, I'd also pick up the remastered version on SACD, and then finally, of course, the Immersion Super Deluxe Edition. The final CD in this picture is a bit of a mystery to me. This appears to be Rat's 1988 album, Reach for the Sky. I don't have this CD in my collection. In fact, I don't even think I ever would have bought it. What I think happened here is I think I won this CD from a radio station along with a pair of tickets to see a rat concert when they came to my town. Now, I wasn't a big rat fan by any means, but I wasn't about to pass up a free concert. But as it turned out, I didn't end up going. I ended up getting sick and my dad went and sold the tickets to somebody standing out in front of the arena on the day of the show. As for the CD, my best guess is I sold it or gave it away because I don't have a single rat album in my collection. You decide if that's good or bad. 
The rest of the albums in the mystery photo are an odd assortment of cassettes, all of which, incidentally, I've upgraded to CD. First, there's What Up Dog by Was Not Was. This is the album that gave us the band's novelty hit, Walk the Dinosaur, but also my favorite Was Not Was track, Dad, I'm in Jail. Next to that, we have the replacements Don't Tell a Soul from 1989. I don't actually have this cassette anymore. I, I probably sold it in a garage sale after I bought the CD version. And actually, just this month, I added another version of the album to my collection with this four CD, one vinyl LP super deluxe edition renamed Dead Man's Pop. Next, we have Edie Brickell and the New Bohemians Shooting Rubber Bands at the Stars, which contains the band's soul hit single, What I Am. I still have the tape for this, but have somehow lost the case for it. Go figure. Below that is the debut album from German Depeche Mode wannabes Camouflage, featuring their only hit, The Great Commandment. And below that is Belief by Knights or Ebb. My best guess as to why I bought this was that it was on the same record label as Depeche Mode and was produced by Flood. The last three cassettes are some pretty big names. New York was the 1989 album by the legendary Lou Reed, featuring the single Dirty Boulevard. I can just about guarantee you that I knew almost nothing about Lou Reed at that time, and I bought that album after seeing a music video on 120 Minutes. Speaking of 120 Minutes, I'm sure I saw plenty of New Order videos as well, but I know for a fact that I was a fan of the band during that time. I owned all of the New Order albums on cassette, but Technique from 1989 was almost certainly the first one that I bought when it was a new release. And finally, there's 1988's Green by R.E.M. This was the second R.E.M. album that I ever bought following their mainstream breakthrough album Document from a year earlier. So, like I said, finding this photograph felt a little bit like opening a time capsule. It was fun to reminisce about that era and the music that I was listening to, to, to think about how I was truly at the beginning of my musical journey at that point in my life. And it seemed only appropriate to try to sort of recreate that image now, 31 years later. As I said, I still have most of the music from that original picture. The only thing truly missing is Rat, and I'm not too heartbroken about that. Anyway, here's what it all looks like today. As in the original photo, we have all the cassettes in the front. The only one missing is the replacements, but that album is well represented by the Super Deluxe Edition in the back left. Similarly, I don't have the actual Dark Side of the Moon CD from the original photo anymore, but the Immersion Box set in the back right more than makes up for it. And across the middle are the actual Van Halen, U2, and Beatles CDs from the original photo, though I've long since discarded any long boxes that I might have kept. Pretty cool, huh? And actually, for the sake of nostalgia, maybe we should go black and white in a nod to my original photograph. Nice. I like that. And you know, I'm sure that the 18-year-old me from 1989 could never have imagined what my music collection could grow into over the next three decades. And who knows, maybe 30 years from now, this video will serve as a sort of time capsule for 2020. Once again, my name's Kyle, and this has been Track by Track. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up, plus check out some of these other videos below that I think you might also enjoy. And of course, be sure to click subscribe, because true music fans always want new releases the day they come out. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.